I know that was a rather long list of give me dats, but I think it was necessary to read in full to truly gain a concrete understanding of the financial realities surrounding Muslim marriage. Now, that last part about maher, the Islamic dowry or bride price, is extremely important for understanding further dynamics of Islamic marriage and subsequently Islamic divorce. The article claims that Islam encourages lower maher, but that doesn't appear to be the reality. As we know full well, there are really no upper limits on the gives me dats of women. If you give women an inch, they will take a mile. Muslim women are of course no exception. Take for instance this article titled Afghanistan, Men Grapple with the High Price of Love. Quote, in Afghanistan, tradition calls for a bridegroom to present a substantial sum of cash called maher or walwa to his bride's family. Supporters say that the tradition is a sign of respect for women and makes the bonds between the families stronger. But in a country suffering from widespread poverty and unemployment, many men cannot afford the gesture and are forced to sell their land and travel abroad to earn money for the maher. As well-off Afghans pay increasingly high amounts of money as walwa, their poorer neighbours find it hard to follow the trend. Some of them sell their land, borrow money from relatives, or leave to earn money working in Pakistan or other Arab countries. Some men are in their 40s by the time they are able to afford marriage." End quote. This article titled Afghanistan's Bride Price, The Misnomer of Maher, gives us a more personal insight into the trials and tribulations faced by Muslim men and their families who attempt to follow the supposedly patriarchal framework of their traditionalist religion. Quote, Zeba is 23 years old, sitting calmly in a green silk dress adorned with gold jewellery and a sheer scarf revealing her curled, light brown hair. She whispers a joke to her younger sister, who laughs loudly and calls over their preoccupied mother, busy entertaining three of more than 300 guests attending Zeba's wedding to Jamshid, a 25-year-old aspiring pharmacist. Prior to the wedding, Jamshid's father, Wahidullah, paid Zeba's father only half of the agreed-upon $10,000 maher. Feeling pressure from Zeba's family to come up with the remaining $5,000, before the rest of the family found out their daughter had married with only half of her publicized dowry, this was the first debt he would soon have to settle. Although Jamshid's family could not afford such a high dowry, Zeba's family refused to agree to the marriage unless the bride price was at least $10,000." Now remember, this is Afghanistan a war-torn third world desert shithole where at the time of this article's publication, the gross domestic product per capita was around $2,000. Quote, I will not lie, said Wahidullah. I told my wife this and I will tell you this. I secretly hoped few people would come. I make $500 a month. My son makes $250 a month. Our rent is $170 a month. Oil is more expensive these days and the price of bread just keeps going up. You know how much this wedding has cost me? $22,000. I owe everyone money, including my daughter-in-law's family now." End quote. In a situation not unlike the present day West where broke men are being blamed for hurting American women's marriage prospects, the Islamic Middle East was already having its own proverbial broke men's marriage crisis as early as 1987, where this sorry state of female dowry entitlement had apparently escalated to the point that some Islamic government leaders began contemplating new welfare initiatives in a vain attempt to artificially keep the traditionalist Islamic marriage machine running. Of course, gynocentrism being what it is, these initiatives to save Islamic marriage were predictably not focused on curbing the hypergamous instincts of Arab women, but rather throwing Muslim men under the bus by suggesting that they amass vast amounts of crippling debt for the sake of appeasing the almighty vagina. Quote, with oil income in decline, more and more Arab men in Persian Gulf countries no longer can afford to marry Arab women. They are taking foreign women as their brides, and Arab leaders are alarmed. A dismayed King Fad of Saudi Arabia has put his personal prestige behind an effort to halt the trend, and the United Arab Emirates and Kuwait, 
plan to offer loans ranging from $4,000 to $15,000 for men who become betrothed to Arab women, end quote. So now that we have some understanding of this Meher bride price, I think we can return to the issue of Islamic divorce. No doubt you have heard the feminist claim that under Islamic law, men can divorce but women can't. This claim is utterly untrue. Here's an example of just such a claim made by the pro-feminist organization Human Rights Watch in an article lamenting the institutional struggles faced by Muslim women in Algeria who wish to utterly divorce rape their husbands. I want you to pay very close attention to the specific details of their complaint. Quote, a man can divorce unilaterally, while a woman must apply to the courts. If a woman wishes to divorce without her husband's consent and without justification, she needs to pay back her dowry or an equivalent amount of money to her husband in return for the divorce." End quote. Did you get that? Even the feminists themselves basically admit that this is not a situation where men can unilaterally divorce but women can't. It is a situation where the woman can indeed take the option to unilaterally divorce her husband without justification. However, in doing so, she may forfeit her Meher wedding dowry. This has nothing to do with human rights or equal rights. This is about gold digger rights. It's all about the money. This is what the feminists are pissed about. They want Muslim women to be able to unilaterally divorce without justification and keep all of the money that her husband and his entire family had to enter crippling debt to acquire for her hand in marriage. And ironically, according to the earlier article from Islam Web, this is supposed to happen anyway. A bridegroom must provide his bride with a marriage gift, which becomes her exclusive property and remains so even if she is later divorced. Feminism and traditionalism are two faces of the same gynocentric pussy pandering coin, and traditional Islam is no exception. It seems that in many cases, including this one, the positions of traditional Islam are actually simpatico with the positions of third wave Western feminism. And this is still only half the lie being told here. The man's ability to divorce, as claimed by these feminists, is far from unilateral. As well as the Meher bride price paid at the time of the marriage, there also exists an Islamic promissory note called Muharriya. This is effectively the Islamic equivalent of a prenup where the man promises to pay his wife a sum of money in the event of a divorce. Muharriya tends to be on the high side. Presumably the thought process of Muslim men is that we'll never get divorced so I may as well use the opportunity to make myself look magnanimous. Gee, what could possibly go wrong? Iran prenups land thousands of men in jail. Quote, when Sadegh married his college sweetheart, he never thought that he would end up as one of those Iranians facing ruin and even prison because of huge sums demanded by his wife's family. But the Muharriya affection system, in which future husbands agree to pay a certain number of gold coins to the bride in the event of divorce, has left thousands of men languishing in Iranian jails and many more destitute. Our Muharriya was high, around 800 gold coins, but when we were planning the wedding, we didn't think about how it might end, said Sadeg, who was divorced last year after eight years of marriage. Each gold coin is worth about 10 million rials, or 300 US dollars. A worker on Iran's average wage would need 50 years to earn 800 gold coins, end quote. You know, I absolutely fucking love the last line of this article. We thought everything was going to go on smoothly forever, said every man who's ever been divorce raped. But don't worry, Sadeg, I'm sure you're going to have a great time in that Iranian debtor's prison because after all, you're a patriarch and Islam is right about women. Bitch, are you for real? Unequal financial responsibility even when both partners work. Divorce rates that creep as high as 20 or 30% depending on the socioeconomic environment. Females initiating divorce in the majority by as much as 80% of cases. Ridiculous bride price dowries which Muslim men are going deep into debt to pay for. And pro-female prenups that quite frankly puts even Western alimony to shame. So what did we learn from all of this? 
Well, nothing.